we've been circling around this topic, and there's no time to go back to square one. So gather around the circle. I have to be square with you, chess kids. What are we talking about today? Triangles! That's right, I tricked you. Actually, the technique is called triangulation, and when done correctly, it will lead to capitulation. That means resigning. Let's take a look at this technique in action. Our first position might look relatively simple. White has an extra pawn, and you might think that you've already done all the analysis and pawn to c6 check wins. Ah, but it doesn't. Now wait, before you throw tomatoes at the screen or send an email to Chess Kid, let me see if we can figure this out. After c6 check, you might think that after pawn takes pawn check, king c5 wins. And after all, if the king goes back to c8 and you capture to get the opposition, you will advance. You will play king c7, and I have no doubt you'll win because you're getting a promotion. But if we go back to our beginning position after c6 check, there's no rule that says black has to capture. Instead, if he calmly jogs his king back to c8, this position is actually a draw. Whether you take or push or whether you move your king, you're just going to have to take my word for it. If you don't believe me, well, ask your chess coach. He might be able to help out. Let's go back to our beginning position and instead see what white could have done. The key to winning these positions is to understand that white is better off if it's black to move. What we're going to do is create a triangle with our own king. And as we all know, triangles have three sides, while the black king only moves twice. If we can move three times and black can move twice, we will have effectively lost a move on purpose. You don't do that every day. But in the end game, sometimes you have to use these techniques. So the correct move, king to e5. Now black has to be a little bit careful. If he starts wandering over toward our king, actually the breakthrough pawn to c6 wins. Again, you can work that out for yourself. I believe you can figure it out. So instead, black might try to play king c6. Now, of course, we have to guard our pawn chain, so king to d4, and now it makes zero sense for black's king to start charging down the board. So instead, king back to d7 is the only other choice, and then king to d5, and voila. A magician doesn't usually reveal his secrets, but Fun Master Mike makes an exception. We have actually moved our king in a triangle. One, two, three. That makes a triangle. Whereas black has moved one, and he's gone right back to we have lost a move getting back to our starting position with it being black's turn. We have the opposition and we should win. We're not going to look at every single possibility. Let's just take a look at one. Black might play king to c8, and now we have to get the diagonal opposition. Look at all these other building blocks that you have to know to build your endgame house. That's right. Regular opposition, diagonal opposition, pawn breakthroughs. Triangulation is just the higher level calculus version of all these other ideas. Okay, now if black plays king to d8, we can play king to d6. We have the regular opposition. And after king to c8, remember that idea called outflanking? Yeah, that was from a long time ago. We push the king away from the side, king to e7. In fact, Gary Kasparov calls this shouldering, like we're pushing the black king away with our shoulder. King to b8, king to d7, king to a8. Now, wait a minute. One more endgame idea in play. Do not play king c7. That would be stalemate. Instead, we win with this really nice breakthrough, pawn c6. And after he captures, Ow. we play king to c7. And of course, our pawn runs free. And after b7 check, it's checkmate in two more moves because after king moves, we promote to queen, and it is mate long before black's pawn gets anywhere. Let's take a look at a more advanced version of triangulation. Now in this end game, when I give it to chess kids, they almost always think that the winning technique is for the white king to run around this way where there's more space. You know what? They're not wrong. However, we need a little bit more delicateness to this because if you start running right away with king c3, of course black's king will charge down the board. And when you play the move king to d3, black's king will actually come over to win your c-pawn. That way, black is going to create counterplay with his own c-pawn. Hmm. Now, if you think that a3 check is the way to decoy the king, I've got some news for you. After captures in king to e4, black is actually better after king to b3. That's right, better. Not winning, but better. Now, if white wises up, he could play king to d3 and still make a draw. But if white goes for the gusto with king to d5, then black's king will go king to b4. And actually, black wins because no matter where white moves, black takes the pawn and black gets a passed pawn. Let's go all the way back to our starting position. Let's not play king to c3 this time. 
Instead, we're going to use our triangulation technique. Remember, if we got to this exact starting position, but it's your opponent's turn, that can only help white because black's king has to back up. And that's really the key to triangulation. It's noticing that you want to start your position with your opponent moving first because your opponent usually has to make their position worse. So the correct first move is king a3. Now black's king has to back up. We don't care where. Now we play king to b2. Now black's king needs to charge back into the action with king to a5. Then we go back to b3. And in case you didn't notice it, we went one, two, three. There's our triangle. All we did was make it black's move first. And now black has to give way. And now when our king moves to c3, we're actually one move ahead of our previous variation. And when black's king charges forward to a5, we actually need to do another little triangle in a sense. King to d3 is well answered by king to b4. We've actually already seen that position. So the correct move for white is actually king to d2. We're avoiding the d3 square until we have to move there. Now, if black's king goes to b4, we'll play king to d3. But instead, if black's king goes to a4, we'll actually play king to e3. We're actually kind of making another triangle. This one's a little harder to see, but it represents the same idea. And now if king to b4, we'll play king to d3. So again, we're kind of making a triangle by going there and then there. And if I were to take the liberty of completing the triangle, it would look like that. Actually, white wins this position precisely because it's black's turn. We don't need to play a3 like we did previously. Now the black king actually has to chase our pawn. So black Back to move, king to a3, king to e4, king takes, king to d5. We're one move ahead, and that is all we need to capture the pawn and win the game. I highly recommend you hit that rewind button on this video and watch the whole thing over again, because this is high-level stuff. Now, to close out our video today, let me just prove to you that triangulation doesn't just have to involve kings, although that is the main piece that uses our technique. Instead, we're going to look at some queens. Now, you don't see any queens, do you? Uh, no, but they're about to appear. The magician plays pawn to h8, promotion to queen, and it might look like a very simple win, but wait, black has a trick. Pawn to a1, also queen. And if you take the queen, what is it? Yeah, it's actually a magical stalemate. So we need to go back. There's a very cool technique here. In this position, white needs to find a really fancy way to lose a turn, okay? So actually the winning move is to move the queen to g8. Doesn't look like much of a move, does it? But now white is threatening to simply move his king here or here off of the back row with discovered checkmate. And the only way for black to defend is to try the same stalemate trick, queen to a2. Again, queen takes queen is stalemate. So now what we do is we play queen to e8. And again, same threat. Any king move is discovered checkmate. So black's only try is to play queen to a4, offering another stalemate. But now white makes a triangle. White plays queen to e5 check. Black only has one legal move. And then white goes back to h8. It was a bit of a weird triangle. Recall that white went here, and then here, and then here, and then here. But you know, that kind of does make a triangle. It took four moves, but okay, let's just call it the world's weirdest triangle. But shockingly, in this position, black has no way to defend because there is no more stalemate trick. If you play queen to a1 now, I'll just take your queen and it'll be check. It won't be stalemate. Those two words are mutually exclusive. You can't have a check and a stalemate. It simply doesn't make sense. So in this position, black has no way to stop all of white's king discovered checkmates and the queen's triangulation is complete. Chess kids, triangulation is an advanced concept where we use all of our other ideas in play, but the important thing is to remember it's when you want your opponent to make the first move in an endgame. If you use all of my ideas, you might just get to play a triangulation, and that's a square deal.